Richard, how big of a get would Gentry Williams be if he ended up signing with Arkansas? Uh, he would be probably one of the best, uh, you know, out of state recruits Arkansas signed in a long time. Uh, I guess maybe looking back, at, I guess Alex Collins would probably be the best in recent history for his out of state. Uh, but yeah, that would, uh, and then that would uh, bode well, I think, uh, for the future in Oklahoma too. Uh, not that you, you're going to go in there and beat Oklahoma on a consistent basis, but. That would definitely get the attention of some of the up and coming uh, prospects in other classes, and uh, and and put more eyes on on uh, the Razorbacks uh, from Oklahoma. There'd be no doubt about that. And Richard, to that point about he's a he's a Tulsa kid. I, I'm forgetting if it's Union or Booker T. I know he goes to a high profile Tulsa school. But if I'm a kid in o- Oklahoma and I'm getting recruited by Big 12 schools, and I play on the defensive side of the football, man, I'm not going to Oklahoma. I'm not playing for Alex Greenwich. I'm not playing for Mike Gundy in the high-flying offense on defense. I'm giving a serious look to a lot of SEC schools. Maybe it's not Arkansas, but I, that I just find... Do you, do you see a lot of players within Big 12 states going elsewhere to SEC schools just because there's not a lot of defense that seems to be played in the Big 12? Well, it definitely happens in the state of Texas. I mean, uh, LSU does a good job of recruiting uh, the state of Texas. Uh, uh, obviously, Texas A&M gets their fair share. Uh, other other uh, teams in the, in the SEC uh, definitely uh, recruit the state of Texas. So, I, th- I think that is uh, that is something to keep in mind if you're if you're if you're a defender uh, and uh, you know, do you want to play in you know a, a conference like uh, the Big Twelve versus one that's uh, uh, a little bit more defensive oriented, so and obviously the best conference in the country too. You get to you get to match up your talents against the best of the best and, and showcase what you can do, and that can obviously help your stock in the NFL. Uh, so uh, I, I think it's a factor. How big of a factor? Uh, I think it just uh, it's you know it's from kid to kid. To be honest with you. Now, you, you hear about the Jinx program and Union now Owasa and Broken Arrow. Give us an idea how talent rich is the greater Tulsa area when it comes to football. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's it's uh you, you got uh, AJ Green from Tulsa Union that's committed and and Q1, uh, Parker uh uh that's uh, from uh that's uh Gentry Williams is a teammate at uh, Tulsa Washington uh just just for 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 Arkansas sake and and there's several others obviously it, it's it. I mean, Arkansas's always recruited Tulsa. It's a no-brainer because it's so close to Fayetteville. Uh, plenty of Arkansas fans in that city. I think it's uh, mm-hmm. it's not that uh, you know. Obviously, Dallas has got the biggest amount of alumni, but I think Tulsa's got a, a, a big amount too. Uh, so I, I think that's a that's a no-brainer to recruit that area. And it's it's like you said, it's very talent rich. Yeah, and you, and you look at. I think Ty brought up a great point. If you're a you're a linebacker, defensive lineman, corner, safety, whatever, on that side of the ball. You know, the Big 12 probably isn't the best conference as a whole, whether you're looking at uh, a school in Oklahoma or a school in Kansas or wherever. that That's just not a league to really showcase what you're about as, as a defensive player. I would think the SEC would be, a, if you want to play on a top-shelf defensive uh, unit, you know, the SEC ought to be where you're looking. No, I, I have no doubt that that, that – that... That definitely enters the mind of so many of the kids, and uh, uh, and and I think that's why the SEC uh, gets their fair share of Texas prospects. I mean, it, let's, let's face it, 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 year in and year out, a lot all the other people in the other conferences always want to downplay the SEC and and the, and the strength of the SEC, uh, but you know, there's no comparison. And if you want to play in the the best league in the conference, uh, there's only one. Talking with Richard Davenport on a recruiting Thursday. If you have a question for him, send that in 877-377-6963. Neva in Tulsa is asking the question about Cameron Ball. Richard, he's set to uh, sign on, or excuse me, commit on December the 16th. What are you hearing about the guy that looks like he's down between the Yellow Jackets and the Razorbacks? You know, you know, he's 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 close to Christopher Paul, the Arkansas, uh, excuse me, Arkansas linebacker commitment, and I know Chris has been in his ear all this time, and and you, if you notice, uh, Cameron's definitely uh, retweeted or tweeted things uh, 
uh, about Arkansas, especially after a win. I think I think he's been impressed with what Arkansas's done this year. Right now, I, I feel I feel uh, feel pretty good uh, about uh, where Arkansas is with him. Obviously, things can change between now and and uh, and December the sixteenth. Uh, yeah, but uh, I think right now Arkansas sits in, in a good position uh, with him, and uh, and I know, uh, like I said, uh, Chris Paul is uh, working on him uh, relentlessly. Richard, Arkansas, I think, has 20 of their 21 guys, and I know that uh, Jaqueline Crawford has also included that, that are set to sign early, in the early signing period. How normal is that when you talk about football recruiting? It's pretty normal, because obviously the coaches want to get, get these guys wrapped up and, and signed as soon as possible. You don't want any any uh, kids uh, being out there and uh, some other schools uh, come in late and try to get them away. Uh, right now, Bryce Stevens is the only one that's saying that he's going to sign in, in February. Uh, I, I, I won't be shocked if he ends up signing uh, early uh, on the 16th because I'm sure Arkansas is going to be trying to convince him to do that. But uh, uh, that's that's a that's a good amount of uh, kids and. And and they've there, there's been some cases where you know the coaches have let uh, some guys uh, sign in February because uh, that was the only time when that particular school that that kid's coming from uh, was having a uh, signing ceremony. So uh, uh, you know that can happen sometimes. But uh, that's that's imp- hey, if you get if you get uh, all but one guy to sign in the early signing period, that's pretty good. If you get them all, obviously that's a grand slam. Yeah. You know, one one of the great rivalries in the country, not just in the SEC, is the Iron Bowl. Auburn, Alabama, they compete year-round when it comes to football, not just the game we saw last week, but but also, um, you know, in recruiting. They, they compete in that state for kids. I think if this arranged marriage of a rivalry between Arkansas and Missouri, that's what we've been calling it this morning. It's a it's an arranged marriage that Jeff Long had the shotgun and walked walked these two programs down down the aisles years ago and forced More this like rivalry upon all of us. If it's ever going to really become something, it, you're going to have to compete for some kids in recruiting as well. And I know Arkansas has had some kids go up there, and Taylor Powell comes to mind. We think about Doriel Green Beckham. You know, nearly ten years ago, is is there anything hot and heavy right now that hey, Missouri and Arkansas really after this kid? There's this great player in St. Louis, and they're kind of both after him because to me, that's what makes all Auburn and Alabama so great, and some of these other rivalries is it's not just about the game on the field. They they compete for recruits just as hard because that's another element to to having a really true great rivalry. Uh, you know, in the St. Louis area, they've definitely uh, uh, gone out and, and been uh, aggressive in recruiting uh, that area, and, and, and other kids in, in the Missouri, uh, in Missouri too. But uh, but most of those kids are in the twenty twenty two twenty three class. I, I think that's you know something that uh, to keep an eye on uh, going forward. But uh, hey, let's face it; it's not a it's also not a rivalry because Arkansas hasn't done. Uh, hasn't won many yeah, times against that's right. Them. So, uh, and that that needs to change on Saturday. That definitely would help them, uh, you know, uh, in recruiting in, in the state of Missouri. So, uh, and 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 Arkansas should not struggle against Missouri. Arkansas historically is a a better a better program, but Missouri has had their number since Arkansas has joined the SEC, and that, that just needs to change. Richard, before we let you go, we always got to finish it with a food question. Earlier this week, it was uh, National Pie Day. Uh, do you have a favorite place in either the central Arkansas or just in all of Arkansas that you think has the best pie around? You know, I'm not, I'm not a big pie guy now. I like pie, but uh, it's not something. I'm usually not a big dessert guy after uh, after a meal if I'm if I go out and eat. But uh, hey, if you want to talk about blooming onions all day, I can do all that. Right. Now. I, I Oh my God, I I love those things. So Ty and SmackDown are doing a taco eating contest at halftime on Saturday. Who who? I, mean, I need you to to handicap this a little bit for us. Who who do you think will win the taco eating contest? They got ten minutes to to take down as many tacos as they can. Who do you think wins this, RD? I'm going to have to go with Ty just from the standpoint that the guy always tweets out about food. He's a food. He's a big time foodie. 
and uh, I, I'm a big time foodie too. But uh, I, I I just tend to thank youth and uh, and that stomach being stretched on the weekends is going to come into in, into play, and he's probably going to take right. it uh, walking away. You got a retort? Come on, Richard, man, come on now. I'm sorry, man. I don't see you tweeting about food as much. I'm I, sorry. I don't need the social media cred and everything like he does. That's, that's, well, I mean, he's got the cred. I mean, he does. He does have the cred. Got, I'll give him that. He made the crud. Yeah. So my, now you talk about his stomach being stretched out just on the weekends. Mine's just stretched out seven days yeah. a week. <laughs> <laughs> and I went. I worked 27 years to get this thing yeah. looking like this, and yeah. it's been a heck of a lot of fun getting it that way. Yeah. If you t- if you take him down on Saturday, uh, I'll be in your corner in the few, uh, next uh, challenge. There I like it. I like it, Richard. We really appreciate man food recruiting football. We always love to do it every Thursday at eight oh five. Appreciate it as always, man. All right, buddy. We'll see you guys. All right.